Good morning, and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network, and that is Maggie. If you haven't met her, she's she's the star of the show. Um, anyway, today's topic is boundaries, choice, and freedom. And um, we sort of touched on this yesterday, but I think it's a fascinating topic and uh, worthy of discussion. So before we dig into that, let's take a minute or two to get started. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen just flooding your lungs and flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy throughout your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, fatigue, negativity. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And this time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating all your cells, electrifying and energizing all your electrons, all your molecules, bringing tremendous energy and vital life force throughout your body and beyond. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's just gently press our palms together. Very softly, rub your fingers against your palms to feel how delicious that sensation is and really allow yourself to become present to your body and this sensual experience of the physical right here, right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, we spoke yesterday about boundaries and, and reframing the notion of boundaries to into choice, but I, I think it's really a valuable thing to dig into more deeply together. Um, I think we, we talk about boundaries as, I, I think that there's a um, parody of the notion of boundaries with the notion of safety. Like we're providing safety for ourselves by creating these boundaries, but by their very definition, boundaries are limits. And yes, we're gonna potentially say no. We talked about that yesterday, just say no um, to things that are unacceptable. But, but when we create a boundary, that boundary contains us as well. So it, it's, it's something that creates a restriction of flow. And I know that there are places in life where it's important to just say no, but um, when we create these these boundaries, they're constraints on ourselves. And what my encouragement is, is to explore the possibility, the potential available to us, the freedom available to us when we elect to reside instead in choice where we allow ourselves the experience of choosing in any given moment. So the reasoning behind that is that when we have a boundary, that's a rule and we don't breach the boundary, right? And we don't allow others to breach the boundary. However, the that boundary may not be appropriate for everyone. It may not be, we may not really want to apply it to everyone, but we have that boundary and, and that relieves us from, in a way from being present to whether it's appropriate in that given moment, you know, to be able to actually choose from moment to moment. I, I want to let you guys know that I'm not seeing any uh, comments at the moment. 
And that's why I'm not responding. Oh, there you go, Rosalind. Welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. We're we're diving more deeply into the notion of boundaries, freedom, and or boundaries, choice, and freedoms. And and really making a distinction between being at choice from being constrained by these constructs that we develop perhaps in pursuit of our own safety. When we start having a conversation around issues of safety, what we're also talking about, what the undercurrent to that conversation is, is fear. And um, I, I think that boundaries, especially, you know, think of the language around it. We defend our boundaries um, and, and that's fending off the world, right? Fending off experience versus choosing in any given moment to say, to say no, to say this is not acceptable or um, I'm not going to tolerate this behavior. You know, that that is a choice in that moment. And I, I really see how in certain ways it's possible that this idea of boundaries is, is something that ends up backfiring on us to keep us, keep us bound in certain patterns of thought and behavior versus being at choice from a place of presence in the given moment. You know, because once you set a boundary, then the whole idea is to defend the boundary, right? Uh, it's not typically a fluid thing, right? If it were a fluid thing, we wouldn't set the boundary. So essentially I'm making a rule and then I'm patrolling to make sure that that rule isn't, isn't breached or broken. And that becomes not only a rule for others um, that we try to enforce, but it becomes a rule for ourselves. And so for instance, to set a boundary and say, nobody's gonna treat me that way. Well, so here we've had these conversations about how we have the ability to shift our perception such that what may have previously been perceived as an attack on us and as a personal attack, we can shift our perception to recognize that I'm whole, I'm complete, I'm not attacked. And that person may be lashing out because of whatever's going on with them, that it really doesn't have anything to do with me. So I don't have to receive it as an attack. And therefore I don't have to defend against it because it's not, it's not, there's no attack there. And when we come to a place of presence and, and connection and love, the more and more we're able to be in that place, the less and less there is any kind of perceived attack. And so we get to shift our responses based on the, the need or the call of the moment. And there's so much more power and freedom available in, in this kind of context rather than making all kinds of rules that we, we follow for ourselves and then expect other people to honor, which often they don't. You know, like when we set a boundary of like, you're not gonna treat me, that, excuse me, you're not gonna treat me that way, or you need to talk to me this way or that way instead, we don't get to control other people's behavior. We get to control the way that we respond to other people's behavior. And one of the, you know, a legitimate response might be to exit. 
that's that's a legitimate response. A, a legitimate response might be to say, no, not okay. I'm not gonna tolerate this. Um, and that is how we get to respond to the moment, to be responsible, able. And I, I am so much about freedom, like fundamentally, that is what, what I'm about. And that's what I believe for myself anyway, that's where my, um, my consciousness, my evolution of consciousness comes from is to be able to have ultimate freedom. Maggie, excuse me for a second. Maggie, come on. This is the pearl of having, having a bird with us is that sometimes she acts unruly and we have to contain her. Like, right, I'm, I could set as many boundaries as I want with Maggie. It's not going to make any difference, right? I get to, I get to choose in the moment how how best to respond come here meg come here come say hi to everybody come on here she is there's a little terror oops <laughs> um she's she's definitely got her own agenda anyway so so dialogue with me about this notion because i i, I know we spoke about it yesterday but i think I think that this is something that is transformative at its, at its very core. And I think that it goes very deep into the way that we operate culturally as well. And so part of it is that there's, we, we talked about conventions and how there are so many things about the way society operates that we just accept without even looking that we that we just follow along unconsciously and it's it's this notion of rules and boundaries and being present like we there are a lot of rules that we follow that are really crazy there are lots of policies and agreements that we just take for granted that are really really destructive at the very least and and potentially devastating beyond that and so I'm, I'm, it, what I'm advocating is presence and our own authority to choose and recognize obviously that in those choices, there are consequences. I'm not talking about being irresponsible. I am talking about sovereignty and I am talking about the the requirement in for transformation is presence is awareness is consciousness like not just going along as a lemming you know that to follow follow the precedent or follow the the common belief, we get to wake up, we get to wake up and, and be alert and be aware. Um, we spoke last week, I think it was last week about what are we pretending not to know. And, and so as we, as we dissolve the boundaries, it can be scary, right? It can be scary if we have this whole big universe to transit together, right? It can be scary without some limits. And so we manufacture these limits for ourselves. And then we forget that we manufactured the limits and we start believing that they're real. 
And there are times for sure when manufactured limits are support us in our growth, support us in our expansion. Welcome, welcome, John. So good to have you joining us. We're talking about boundaries, choice, and freedom. And so, yes, there are times when we place limits on ourselves that support us. However, the, the challenge is that we then become so acclimated to these limits that we forget that we created them. We forget that they're just manufactured constructs, that they're not real. And we allow ourselves to abdicate choice in preference to these limits. And if you can, if you can see this dynamic, you can recognize it as a form of insanity, right? It's like, I, I remember as a kid, step the step on a crack, break your mother's back. I don't know if that's around anymore, but it was like crazy when, when I was a kid walking on the sidewalk and avoiding the cracks in the sidewalk because I didn't want to do harm to my mother. You know, like it's, it's like this crazy rule. It started as a game probably. And, and then, you know, becomes something more of a, of a belief and then a fear and then a, a limit and a constraint and it can be crazy making. Welcome, welcome Karen from Australia. How awesome to have you here with us. That's awesome. Um, today we're talking about boundaries, choice and freedom. And my encouragement here because I know that so many of us have been really kind of socially encouraged to set boundaries, right? This is what I'll permit. This is what I won't. Essentially, we're creating our own rule book. And the thing is that even rules we make for ourselves can become debilitating, can become so constrictive that they that they inhibit our evolution. And so I'm inviting all of us to come back to choice in any given moment. And, and when, we're, when we're making our choices, when we're being responsible, when we're being response able, able to respond through presence in the moment, then we have a much greater fundamental freedom. And I guess really what this conversation is in, at its core is talking about how we are the creators of our universe. We are the creators of our experience. And so we can end up boxing ourselves into very, very small boxes. Um, so when we, if we can look at the limits that we've placed on ourselves, the boundaries that we have made for ourselves or that we have tried to impose on others, when we look at those boundaries, what happens as you recognize those boundaries? What happens when you internally presence yourself to your ability to actually choose. And what shifts about that whole experience? You know, I think that the, the boundaries by default are closing in, right? When we, it's different when we make a choice, we're, we're present to that choice. When we have this boundary, it becomes something that's like an enclosure for us, right? And when we then identify that boundary and instead step into 
choices around whatever that boundary was constructed to defend from then then we can presence ourselves so we have mo more vo mobility maybe though the boundary is two feet too close or five feet too far and when we're not present to choice we can't respond to the need of the moment right well, because we're just at the effect of the boundary so I, I would really love to hear your feedback around this and and to feel in to your body and being in entertaining this this experience of choice i think she's yep i can't tell where the, whether she went onto the plant again she's there's this ongoing battle with her uh she's not on the plant on ongoing battle with maggie eating the plant and the plant trying to survive and me trying to stop her from eating the plant so um, Elaine says, when we remember to live from integrity, as we let go of beliefs that were conditioned from the past and set ourselves free from the minds of prisons of belief. Exactly. So really, that's kind of what we're talking about, because if you if you look at these boundaries that we set for ourselves, our beliefs are boundaries, our beliefs are the the limitations that we're creating for ourselves about what is possible in reality welcome welcome pat good afternoon to you so glad to have you with us and elaine's always so glad to have you with us so when we're talking about maggie here we go uh, when, when we here when we talk about beliefs what are beliefs? Beliefs are constructs, right? What are boundaries? Boundaries are constructs. The boundaries are constructs that are probably founded on beliefs. Like I was saying that boundaries typically are developed from a place of fear. And, and, and not to say that boundaries can't serve us, but they serve us, Maggie, Maggie, no, come on. They serve us when we remember that that we created them. They serve us when we remember that we created them. They don't serve us when we when they just go on automatic pilot. And and the thing is that with a lot of beliefs we may not have actively created them ourselves what we may have inherited them and when we inherited them she's being really bad this morning or well, bad's an interpretation but she's really being bird this morning maggie um when we when we are at the effect of our beliefs when we don't recognize the operating system, we do have the ability to step back and, and really see the operating system. That's, that's something that at least we believe we're unique in as human beings, that we have the ability to be self-aware. And I don't know if we are the only creatures that are capable of that, but we'd like to believe we are, right? In any case, through that self-awareness, we have the ability to recognize this mechanical, almost mechanical uh, way of going through life that we have programmed by these beliefs. And we, we talk about reprogramming our beliefs, which is something that we actively can do. So when we look at our lives, when we look at the things that we're challenged by, we can look at what are the underlying beliefs or structures that we've put in place to perpetuate that reality. So, so many of us have struggled or are struggling with issues around self-worth. 
So what are the messages? What are the beliefs? What are the ideas? Um, if I have issues around self-worth and somebody is telling me that I'm worthless, then, and I put up a boundary, say, I, I may say, listen, you don't get to talk to me that way. I'm not going to put myself present to that. I, I'm because why? Because I'm threatened by them saying things that attack my self worth. That's part of it. I mean, it can be just unpleasant. And who wants that kind of unpleasantness? I mean, we have that opportunity to make those choices as well. But part of it is that when they're telling me that I'm unworthy, part of me believes it. And therefore, I feel like I need to defend against it. Right. And so what we get to see is that in our reactivity, our reactivity is giving us a clue as to what the underlying foundational beliefs are or, or limits are. And we get to address that, like, what a crazy belief. How is that belief serving me that I'm unworthy? I get to torture myself through life with that belief. What if I, and, and that's sort of a boundary, you know, my boundary is I'm unworthy and therefore I don't get to experience all these wonderful, amazing things. That's a boundary. It's separating me from possibility, right? I'm wondering, does this make sense to you? Uh, that, that what we get to do is to come back consciously to choice. So when we recognize that we're feeling unworthy or we recognize that we're that we're in a process of self-hate. We have the ability to step out of that. If we have the grace, you know, it's a moment of grace to remember in the midst of that is like, oh, I'm not my beliefs. That's just an operating system or just a program on the operating system. It's not something that is true. And when we have the ability to step back from that, and recognize it's not that it's true, it's just a construct, we can maybe say, well, what would I prefer? To be at choice instead of honoring that construct as an absolute. And I, and I, I believe that by challenging these constructs, that's the path to awakening because as the constructs fall away, what opens up is possibility and presence. And so please tell me, I'm, I'm wanting to hear from you about these boundaries. What is your experience? As you just feel into, oh, I actually have choice. I actually can presence myself to saying, that's actually not, I, I don't have to believe that's true that it's all a construct. And, and when we can recognize it's all a construct, then we don't, even though we've had all this programming, we can recognize that it's like we're marionettes where our strings have been just being pulled. And we get to step back from that and rewire the strings if we choose to. And I don't mean to oversimplify it. I'm not, I, I finding those strings is is sometimes quite a challenge you know because we're so admired in this um in having received the projections of others ideas and that's formed our own beliefs and we just sort of bought into it because when we were little we were not filtering out we didn't have the capacity to filter what was real or what wasn't real welcome welcome josie Great to have you here. So um, we're about to wrap up, but we've been talking about boundaries, cho choice, and freedom. And I just, or, or boundaries, freedom, and choice. And I'm all about freedom. And those of us, you know, for, especially from Enlightened World Network, we're looking to wake up. We're looking to, to be present. We're looking to be the creators of our lives and so it's this is this is where it comes from is to 
take our take back our sovereignty to take back our ability to choose to recognize not only do we get to choose what boundaries we set ongoingly like to say it's not like it's a thing that's there it's a thing that i've set up and i can move it around any way i want whenever i want that's that's a really important thing and people live within rules we live in agreements right and sometimes those agreements get broken and then we get to either renegotiate those agreements or end the relationship you know but this is about choice we don't have to end the relationship because an agreement was broken we get to choose again because we get to choose whether that boundary is still appropriate does that and that actually um Rosalyn, you spoke to that yesterday when you were talking about leaving your boyfriend because he didn't want to get married and then you came back because you were exploring relationship more deeply so what you did was you shifted the boundary you actually came to a place of choice which is really where we are most empowered and so elaine says for me all my programs were set in place before i came into this body to dissolve to know myself as love or the one true self beyond belief into knowing the truth within as a beautiful process of enlightenment. So, um, I, Elaine, what I'm, if I'm interpreting what you're saying properly, uh, you're saying that all the things that you uh, were here to dissolve on your path to awakening were set before you came into this body. Um, I, I see people evolving into like in the house, in the family, that is a, a really powerful place where we get a lot of our programming. Uh, maybe there was an agreement about what those programs would be before you came into your body. Um, but, and, and I kind of believe there is. Um, and it's again, I'm not saying that any of this stuff is true. I'm saying this is my hypothesis. Um, and Lane says, all is truly free. It's a journey to remember. Oh, I have a choice here. That is the dance. Yes, 100%. That the, that the dance is to remember that we are always a choice. And, and that we can make choices that are outside of the boxes that we've imposed on ourselves or that we've received you know, that others may have projected and we receive knowingly or unknowingly. I'm not saying that we, we deliberately went out to believe that we were, or to accept the programming that we were, um, that we were unworthy that happened and was absorbed with, without our ability to filter it most likely from the time we were very young. And then, as Elaine says, 100%, what we get to do in our evolution is to, is to take that programming from a place of automation to a place of awareness and then a place of choice. And so um, I invite you to choose to have an extraordinary day. I'm going to wrap this up. I, I love, love, love our time together. And um, I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And Maggie, who is the voice in the background, um, is the, um, sorry, <laughs> I was just thinking about Maggie being the voice in the background and also something of an ongoing disruptive influence, you know, to shift the, the energy for us, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, um, we go live each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page. And I invite you to please, please, please check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network. Um, enlightened World Living and EWN of uh, One with the Earth. And it is such a privilege to be with you. Let's choose well, choose, choose for our growth and our joy 
today and I look forward to seeing you again here really soon.